So I'm Anthony Harris and I want to just give you an idea of how when you have submitted your paper to a journal, how you deal with the peer review because it can be quite tough. Now what generally happens is your paper goes to the journal, it's managed by an editor, that editor sends your paper out to maybe two or three reviewers, they make comments about the paper, they send that back to the editor and the editor sends those comments back to you as the main author and asks you to revise the paper accordingly. So there's two things you have to do. Firstly, you have to do a point-by-point -point response to the editor addressing all the comments made by the reviewer. And secondly, you have to revise the paper in line with those comments and responses made. So what I want to do first of all is take you through an example of a paper that was submitted to the Lancet Infectious Diseases. It went out for peer review and we now have the comments sent back to us and we have to respond. So this is the response, if you like, the point-by-point -point response to the peer review. Now the best way I find of doing this is to copy and paste those comments into a Word document and then use that as the template to answer each of the comments by the peer reviewer. And I'm going to give you some examples. I'm not going to go through the whole of this uh, peer review point-by-point -point response because it was very long, but show you how we would try and deal with this. So this is the paper, Lancet Infectious Diseases, Diagnosing and Managing ART Failure in Resource-Limited Settings in Sub-Saharan Africa. And I've addressed the letter to Peter Haywood, Senior Editor of the Lancet Infectious Diseases. Now, I know this person reasonably well, so I can address them as Dear Peter. Dear Peter, thank you very much for the comments of the reviewers and the editor. We have attempted to address all these comments and give a point-by-point -point response below. We copy the comments below and respond using bold font. Then we deal with reviewer one. So first of all, we thank the reviewer for the work he has put in in basically, basically helping make our paper better. So we thank the reviewer for the useful and relevant comments and we respond below. Now the reviewer numbered his comments. So the first one is introduction, Paragraph 2, line 2, this is the reviewer, he says, you mean that 97% of adults and children who were on treatment remained on first-line regimens, not 97% overall. And we respond by saying yes, and we have revised this sentence accordingly. The second comment he makes is as follows, introduction. You should also reference abstract MOAB 104 from the IDA study in South Africa presented at Cape Town this year, where 11% of children, I'm now going to move to page two, on antiretroviral therapy at three years were failing, and 50% were not switched to second line therapy, and those who were switched had significant delays. So we will respond as follows. We have modified the introduction and included a sentence on the IDA study with the added reference. Third point he makes. In the introduction, you should separately discuss the implications of failing because of lack of access to drugs and failing because of poor adherence, as they have quite different implications. So this is our response. We have modified this paragraph and included reasons for resurgence or persistence of HIV in the blood that include drug stockouts, poor adherence due to side effects or other factors, use of standard first-line ART following single-dose nevirapine to prevent perinatal HIV transmission, and inadequate nevirapine levels as a consequence of concomitant use of rifampicin in HIV-infected tuberculosis patients. We believe from our Malawian experience that lack of access to drugs leads to poor adherence because patients take half doses or share with relatives or friends. But we are cognizant of word limits 
and have not got involved in a discussion of these finer details. I should just expand on this. The Lancet Infectious Diseases asked us to respond to reviewers' comments, revise the paper, but not lengthen the paper considerably. So we can use this, if you like, as an excuse not to go into great detail about some of the things the reviewer wants us to address. Let me go on to point four. In the introduction, given your comparison to the UK, you might also cite some figures on failure rates in those countries, or in clinical trials conducted in those countries for comparison. Our response was as follows. We wondered how relevant it is to include data from UK or Europe, as the management of ART is so different in these countries. We are again cognizant, and I'm going on to page three, of word limits, and have also added a number of references to address other points. As a result, we have not amended this section. So this is to give you uh, an idea that you don't always have to respond to what the reviewer wants you to address, either because you don't think it's appropriate or because you don't have the space. So here we have been quite polite and we've said to the reviewer, we don't think this really fits in with our paper. We have a problem with space and actually we're not going to address it. But we say it in a nice way. We do not want to upset the reviewer. Point five. One other reason for virological failure is giving single-dose nivirapin for mother-to-child transmission. Our response is thank you, we have included this and added two references. Now I'm not going to go through any more, but I hope you get the idea that essentially you copy and paste each of the points made by the reviewer and you respond to each of those points in turn, in a polite and friendly way. But if you feel you do not want to answer that comment, then you can be quite right in saying, um, I can't address this comment because of word space limits or because I don't think it is appropriate to the paper I'm writing. Now I'm gonna take you down, we had reviewer two, we had reviewer three. I'm gonna take you down to page 11, which was the editor's comments to us. He says, I am not sure that the article really needs shortening as suggested by one reviewer. It is currently a good length, but please try to respond to the reviewer's comments without adding substantially to the word count. Please include a short section with the heading contributors for details briefly of the contribution made by each named author to the preparation of the paper. So our response to the editor is as follows. We thank, this says have, but it should be thank, we thank the editor for his comments. We have not been able to shorten the paper, and with the additional comments to address reviewer's suggestions, the paper is slightly longer, now at 3,260 words instead of 3,000 words. We have added a section on contributors. We have also amended the title to reflect that we are focusing on resource-poor countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. If there are further points that need addressing, we are happy to revise accordingly. Your sincerely, Anthony Harries, on behalf of the co-authors. Now I want to show you briefly how we amend the paper. In the Lancet Infectious Diseases, they asked us to change the paper, highlighting in yellow the changes we have made. Other journals do it differently. For example, the International Journal of Tuberculosis and Lung Disease asks you as an author to make the changes in red font. If you submit to Tropical Medicine and International Health, it will ask you to make the changes using tracked changes. So you must adhere to the guidelines of the journal and follow accordingly. Let me take you through a few of the revisions made to this paper. You can see that we altered the title. So here we said the title is The Diagnosis and Management of Antiretroviral Therapy and the revision was In Resource Limited Settings in Sub-Saharan Africa, Challenges and Way Forward. And this is on page 12. I'm going to scroll you down to page 15 
which was the summary, and one of the reviewers wanted us to make some changes to the summary. So here you can see in yellow highlight, the second sentence reads as, less than 3% of patients are currently receiving second line treatment, while the evidence suggests that between 15 to 25% of patients have detectable viral loads, 12, or more, 12 months or more into treatment, of whom a substantial pro pro proportion may have virological failure. So we've added that in and clearly highlighted where that change has been made. I'm going to take you to page 16, and you can see the reviewers wanted us to make some minor comments, some minor changes here. So we have made changes in the second paragraph, on the second line, and also on the fifth line, and also on the second from last line. Let's go to page 17. You can see here we've got quite a lot of addition because one of the reviewers wanted us to expand on cross-sectional studies. So let me read this additional bit that we put in to the first paragraph on page 17. Cross-sectional studies often fail to differentiate true virological failure from detectable viral loads due to viral blips, brackets occasional increases in viremia during otherwise successful HIV suppression, or poor adherence. In a cohort study from South Africa, an HIV RNA, more than 1,000 copies per mil, occurred in a 7% of patients. But following use of targeted adherence interventions by peer counsellors, virological failure, defined as HIV RNA, more than 1,000 copies per mil on two consecutive occasions, was only confirmed in 2%. So I hope you understand how you can do this, basically, to revise a paper. Do make sure, before you resubmit your paper and your point-by-point -point response back to the editor, that what you say in the point-by-point -point response letter ties up and agrees with what you have revised in the paper. Finally, just to take you down to this is on page 29. For references, you can see that the reviewers wanted us to add in references. So here, we've indicated those additional references using yellow highlight. So reference 4 was an additional reference recommended by one of the reviewers. If I go to page 31, you can see that we have 15, 16, 17. These are References 15, 16, and 17, again, new references suggested by one of the reviewers. An important point here is that if the reviewers ask you to put in additional references, you may have to renumber all your references if you are doing this manually. If you have a reference manager tool like Mendeley, which has been described previously, then Mendeley will do this for you. But otherwise, you will have to change the numbering in the paper and the numbering in the bibliography. Finally, you may be asked to make changes to the tables. So here on page 42, you can see that we have added a table 3. One of the reviewers wanted us to put in a table discussing eligibility for antiretroviral treatment in Malawi. So this is a new table, and we've highlighted this new table using yellow highlight. It's not easy doing revisions, and you need to spend quite a lot of time and effort, and it's good to get one of your co-authors to support you in this process, especially if you have never done it before. The success of your paper being accepted or not depends very much on how you respond to the editor and the reviewers and how you revise this paper. If you do it in a poor, sloppy way, then your paper will probably be rejected. And then you have to start all over again with another journal. If, however, you pay attention to this, you respond firmly, politely, you answer all the comments, you make the paper as comprehensive as possible in the revision, your paper will probably be accepted, and that is, of course, what you want. Thank you very much, and good luck.